In the previous part, we carried out a blindfolded solution of 2D conduction in a rectangular slab. Now we will see what magic the scripts of OpenFORM and ParaView did for us. We will spend some time understanding them so we can use them for other problems. Firstly, the case directory. It contains the subdirectories system constant, logs, and numbered directories. As we learned in the open form lecture, these represent computational parameters, physical parameters, console output logs, and time instances. 0 is the initial time. 0 0.5 is a dimensionless time, which is tau equal to 0 0.5. Inside the time folders, we have files by the name of t, and gradient of t in each of the directions x, y and z. Let us see how the geometry has been defined in open form. Contents of the file can be edited by any editor such as vi, nano or gedit. To simply view and not edit it, we can use the more command. This is the part of the contents of the file block mesh dict kept inside the systems directory. Look for the section that defines vertices. Just before this, we see two variables w and h, assigned values 0 0.5 and 1 respectively. These denote the dimensionless width and height of the slab. Below it, notice that vertices has doubly nested round brackets. This means that it is a two-dimensional array. This is used to define the vertices of a rectangular slab. Let us first draw the box and number the points for our reference. We have 8 vertices from 0 to 7. The numbering of vertices can be in any order. We can now list the coordinates seen here. 0 is the origin. We are using a coordinate axis directions defined by right hand thumb rule. That is, z axis is outward from the xy plane of the screen. Vertex 1, which is the second element in this list, is at x equal to w, y equal to 0, and z equal to 0. To use the value of w, we write it as $w. We could have directly written it as 0 0.5 in the list of vertices. But keeping it generic as $w and $h is helpful in that we need to change the, if we need to change the aspect ratio of the geometry, then we have to do it in just one place, that is here. Similarly, we can identify all other vertices. Since we are simulating a 2D slab, the length in the z direction does not matter. It can be any value. We have chosen it to be 0 0.1. So the vertex number 6, which is diagonally opposite to the origin, is at $w, $h and 0 0.1. After completing the definition of the geometry, we can quickly check it in ParaView. Seen here is the ParaView rendering of the geometry. It can be seen that the width is 0 0.5, height is 1, and thickness is 0 0.1. After defining the geometry, we need to identify the faces. The faces are needed to specify the boundary conditions. In the same file block mesh dict, scroll down to the section which defines the object called boundary. The boundary has a list of surfaces, top wall, left wall, right wall and so on. The name of the surfaces can be any string. Inside each surface, we have to identify a list of faces from the object and identify its type. 
Here, the top and the left wall are all solid walls, where no slip boundary condition is applied. Therefore, we set the type to be wall. Each surface can be made of several faces. Let us see how to specify the faces. A face is identified by a series of vertices. Here, there is a particular order in which vertices are to be specified. This will define the direction of the domain. OpenFORM uses outward normal convention. That means the normal to any volume is the outward to that volume. The sequence of vertices must be specified according to the right hand thumb rule. The thumb points th to the direction of the outward normal. For the top wall, if we start at vertex A, 3, then the order would be 3, 7, 6, 2. We could also start it at 7 and then it would be 7, 6, 2 and 3. Both denote the same direction of normal. Similarly, the left wall is 0, 4, 7, 3. This way, all the walls can be specified. We can check this again using paraform, as shown here. We need to remember this convention only for simple geometries. For complex geometries, it is difficult to define the vertices and coordinates by hand. In such cases, we use other CAD software to import surfaces or solid objects. These are advanced topics and will not be covered here. Once the domain and the boundaries are defined, we can now define the physics. We have already identified that we are solving the unsteady state conduction problem. We have to look for various solvers or applications supported by OpenFOAM. The solver that matches our equation is called as Laplacian foam. It solves for this equation, which is identical in form to our model equation. Check openform.com user guide for fields which are mandatory and parameters that are needed for the solver. In this case, the mandatory field is called as T. It can be temperature or concentration. Both have identical equations. The solver is specified in the control dict file inside the system directory. Since T is a mandatory field, we have to specify it under the initial condition folder 0. This is the ma main content of the file T under the directory 0. T has a dimension of temperature. Although we are solving for the dimensionless equation, we have to identify the dimension here. Laplacian form also requires the diffusivity to be specified. In our dimensionless equations, we don't have any free parameters. All the constants have been absor absorbed in the dimensionless variables. This means that the thermal diffusivity in our problem is equal to 1. The value of thermal diffusivity is specified in the file called transport properties under the folder constant. Note that irrespective of the temperature or concentration, the dimensions of diffusivity is L square by T. So that we have dt specified with that dimensions and with a value equal to 1. How to specify the initial and boundary conditions? In the dimensionless variables, theta is initially 0 everywhere inside the domain. This is also specified in the file t under the directory 0. The initial condition is specified by the variable internal field, which is set to be uniformly 0 everywhere in the domain. For the boundary conditions, we have constant values at 4 volts. 
Such a condition is also called as the Dirichlet boundary condition. In open form, the Dirichlet boundary condition is specified by the type fixed value. In the dimensionless variables variable theta, the top wall is at a temperature of 1 and the side walls are at a temperature of 0 and this is seen here. The front and the back walls need to have an adiabatic or zero flux boundary condition. In effect, we are solving a 2D problem. In open form, if we specify a surface patch to be empty, it will not solve in the direction perpendicular to the patch. That is, it will effectively solve a 2D problem. How do we generalize this to a new problem? We will learn some simple tricks here. New problems mainly differ in the geometry and physics. We can use existing geometry and physics from the tutorial problems provided along with the open form package. For the slab T4 case, we have used the geometry from the cavity case because both use rectangular domains which are 2D. It is available under this folder. Most of the directories have complex geometries. We can know the shape of each of them by opening them in paraform. Identifying the physics is a little easier. The names of tutorial folders are classified according to the applications with clearly defined physics, clearly named physics. For the conduction problem, we have used Laplacian foam application for, for the flange case. The generic trick for new problems is to first identify the physics, that is the differential equation to be solved, and identify the boundary conditions. Then search for the available applications in the open form user guide, in the tutorial folder, or in online forums meant for open form. The users of open online forums are generally helpful in this regard. Handling complex geometries is quite advanced and special tools are required for the modeling. After specifying the geometry and physics, we need to carry out the discretization of the domain. For simple geometries, we can use open forms built in meshing application called as block mesh. The mesh gradation is specified in the file block mesh dict. For each block, we specify the number of cells in each direction. In this case, we have taken a single block for the entire slab and with uniform grading. There are 20 cells in the x direction, 40 in the y direction and 1 in the z direction. If we want to improve the precision of our numerical solution, we only need to increase these values. For now, we need to specify the disc discretization scheme and solve our para parameters. The starting and stopping criteria are also specified in the file control deck. There are parameters that set what must be the start time, the end time, time step, writing time, etc. The discretization scheme for differential operators is given in the file FV schemes. In the unsteady conduction, we have two operators, one for time and for divergence and gradient. There are several options available for these. We have simply used the default values which we copied from the flange case. Now that we have set up the entire problem, it is time to execute. We had a small file called 
we had a small script called all run that did everything. We executed it with the command dot slash all run. This is the contents of the file. The first few lines are common to all such scripts. The main logic is as follows. First, we find the name of the physics application being run. In this case, it is Laplacian foam. The command run application then executes a given software of OpenFoam. Firstly, it generates the mesh, mesh with the block mesh application. Then the particular physics of the application is executed. That is Laplacian foam in this case. Lastly, some useful information is extracted from the console log files. In this script, called a shell script, any line starting with a hash symbol is a comment and is ignored while execution. We will now understand how to perform error analysis from the output of simulations. Recall that the CFT is about converting a set of differential equations to a system of algebraic equations. The system of algebraic equations can be written in a matrix form like this ax equal to b. Though here it is linear, in general the matrix equation can be nonlinear. Here x is the unknown vector. When the equations are solved approximately, ax need not be equal to b. There will be a residual r, which is an average of the deviation of ax from b. The average is taken over all points in the domain. The goal of a numerical solution is to minimize this residual to the lowest possible, or to a value that is acceptable from an engineering standpoint. OpenFOAM writes the residuals at every sampling time step. In this case, it is written to a file called log.laplacianfoam. We can inspect this file and plot the residuals as it evolved from the initial condition. We have used GNU plot to plot the residuals with time. The command is given here. We see that the residuals in the temperature drops exponentially as the time goes from 0 to 1. Note that the y-axis is in log scale. We have stopped the simulations at 1. If we want still lower error, we can continue the time even further. Since the conduction problem is linear, it is possible to obtain errors as low as the machine precision. But in general for nonlinear problems, and large geometries, we do not get such low values of residuals. Sometimes we have to be content with an error of just 1%. Beyond that, the residuals will plateau out and we cannot improve the numerical solutions. After we are convinced that we have obtained the desired accuracy, we can view the results in ParaView. We will use Paraform application which can read OpenFOAM output. It is always good to start on a clean state by resetting the session using Ctrl R. Open the file called slabd4.openfoam. Then click on Apply. By default, we will see some geometry, but they are not properly colored. By default, we are displaying a surface and coloring by VTK block colors, but we don't need that. The list of variables available in the source file can be checked under the volume fields section. We can retain the representation to be a surface, but for the coloring, we change it to T. In this case, T is the temperature. And this comes from the OpenFold 
open form field variable names. This selection of representation and coloring can also be done from the quick access toolbar as shown here. We can also change the orientation of the axis to get a better view. This is also easily available in the toolbar section. Suppose we want to plot the temperature across a given plane, we need to slice the 3D data. This is one way of manipulating the source data. First, select the source data. In this case, it is slab t4.openform. Then from the toolbar, use the slice widget as shown here. This will give a plane section with a perpendicular in the z direction. The center of the plane and the direction of the normal can be modified in the slice properties panel as shown here. To view the evolution of the solution from an initial condition to a steady state, we use the play button from the toolbar. In many cases, it is useful to plot the variation of the variables along a straight line. This is one dimensional variation often gives us insights into the major transport phenomena happening in the system. Select the source data first. This could be entire 3D data or just the slice data. Then from the toolbar, we can select the widget plot over line. The default coordinates for the two points of the line can be modified from the line properties. Clicking on apply will then render the temperature plot along the line in the active viewport. It is also possible to obtain this data as a spreadsheet for analysis outside Paraview. For this, we first split the current viewport into two windows. Then the second viewport we select the spreadsheet view. This data can be exported to a desirable spreadsheet format. When starting with OpenFOAM, it is important to compare the solutions we obtain with some known result. It is always good to start with a geometry and physics for which we have analytical solutions or previously verified numerical solutions. In the case of slab conduction with constant temperature walls, the analytical solution can be found in the heat transfer book by Incorpora and others. Equation 4.19 in Incorpora gives the steady state temperature profile as a series solution. We can extract the temperature along the center line in the y direction. Since we have already extracted this data using spreadsheet view, we can compare these both. There is a GNU plot script provided which can be used to make this comparison. We can see that the numerical solution matches exactly with the analytical solution. This gives us confidence in the numerical approximations we have made. To summarize, we obtained numerical solution to a simple slab conduction problem. The major steps are firstly, identify the physics and define the mathematical problem, convert the equations to dimensionless variables, identify the application in open form that solves this equation and map our variables to those variables. Set up the computation problem by meshing and discretizing the equation. Solve and analyze the result in different visual renderings using Paraview. Thank you.